we now move on to uh, Brazil. We have uh, Antonio from uh, Central Bank of Brazil. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, first, I would like to thank on behalf of the Central Bank of Brazil for this opportunity to share knowledge at an event with uh, such a distinguished participant as this one. Uh, uh, initially, uh, I would like to begin stating that the term uh, Web3 refers to the next generation of web, web technical, legal and payments infrastructure, including blockchain, smart contracts and cryptocurrencies. According to, to many uh, advocates, the peer-to-peer -peer character uh, of Web3 means it represents a more equitable vision for the web than its current interaction, Web2 which is dominated by powerful intermediary platforms like Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, and other big tech companies. The majority of exist existing Web3 projects fit into one of three categories, categories which are a decentralized finance, or we can call it DeFi, which encompasses peer-to-peer -peer blockchain-based financial services, including savings, borrowing payments, uh, and credit scoring. The second category is digital services, uh, which in also encompasses decentralized internet service provision, cloud storage, web infrastructure, data analysis, and finally, uh, the category of collectibles, uh, encompassing digital artwork, sports, and visual goods. Uh, on the other hand, besides the benefits of its new technology, there may be a trade-off between innovation and financial stability. And in this regard, countries should manage it appropriately. Concerning this subject, <coughs> in the assessment of the Central Bank of Brazil, the innovation should generate additional benefits to traditional financial service, allowing greater autonomy, uh, security, and interoperability. In addition, greater transparency of financial inclusion and of transactions and invited, invited, is invited, reducing operation, operating costs in addition to allowing greater financial inclusion and easy of capital flows. In this way, the benefits are intrinsically linked to the development of new and more efficient financial products and service, which should allow for greater financial stability. Naturally, there will the challenge to financial stability that are especially acute for emerging markets, economics, uh, and policymakers must be adapted uh, the pre to prevent greater risks. Notably, the appropriate treatment to be given to technological financial entities is highlighted in the view of their access to a large volume of data on potential applicants for financial goods and services which can configure a significant risks of information asymmetry, which may prove to be extremely decisive in the competition and generate potential position of market dominance for technology entities. Thus, uh, policies <coughs> must anticipate the need for a leveling of information between segments with a view to allowing and expanding competition. In this way, the challenge is to delimit the adequate arrangement for the performance of technology entities and traditional financial institutions in the same ecosystem. Many risks stem from the anonymity or partial anonymity of crypto assets. For instance, the inability to monitor and manage capital flows as well as AML CFT risks. And combating criminal activities, notably those linked to ML uh, CFT, are decisions taken by countries with a view to preventing fundamental values of society. In this sense, there is a legal risk present in anonymity, total or partial, <coughs> which must be fought by all participants in the ecosystem, even in decentralized networks. In addition, what happens in practice is that this anonymity may not be so broad given the public history of all transactions, thus allowing for traceability. Concerning cooperation between countries, there is an urgent need for joint action by the various regulators and supervisors, 
as well as the authorities responsible for competition and data protection. In this way, it appears that several authorities must act on crypto activities guaranteeing financial stability, economic competition, protection, protection of personal data, in addition to combat, combating criminal activities. Countries should manage the trade-off between regulating crypto assets, especially stable coins, to protect consumers and limiting their adoption as well as bank disintermediation. There is still much debate about the use of stablecoins in different jurisdictions. However, it is undeniable that these stablecoins serve as a proxy for sovereign currencies, playing a relevant role in bridging the universe of crypto assets and the traditional financial system. On the other hand, there is a concern that transactions with dominant stablecoins other than traditional sovereign currencies can have significant impact on countries' monetary policy, as well as on international payment flows. This issue demands greater attention from regulators and supervisors, with a view to preventing these countries from undermining financial stability. Thus, the pressing challenge to, to guarantee financial stability without jeopardizing the development of my new models and technologies. In order to approach this work, it is necessary to identify the entities suited as entry points for regulation. <laughs> this is more difficult crypto markets, as in some cases they lack clear reference points, be these firms or individuals. Indeed, some crypto proponents argue that the task is impossible. That said, a useful starting point could be the entities and persons exerting de facto control on a DeFi protocol. In C5, of course, the problem is less serious, given more traditional nature, nature of entities such as stablecoin trading platforms. For much the same reasons, the obstacle, obstacles in achieving international effective and coordinated enforcement loom large. Much of the crypto activities originates in smaller jurisdictions with little super, supervisory capacity and may not be fully covered by international standards. Difference in regulatory models would greatly complicate international collaboration on supervision and oversight. Moreover, New international standards and where relevant guidance on, ex on existing standards that are currently being developed or updated may take time to implement in individual jurisdictions, especially where it concerns the new legislation. Depending on the target features of the crypto world, selective bans, containment, and regulation can naturally be combined and indeed they have been. For instance, within jurisdictions, some of the most harmful crypto activities could be fully banned, such as energy intensive proof of work verification or algorithmic stable coins not backed by reserves. Those intermediaries that bridge between traditional financial and crypto, such as centralized exchange and stable coins, should be subject to regulation. All of the approach will be, take time and requires resources and expertise to be de deployed for them to be expected to be effective. And common approach, including in the form of standards, would make effective international coordination easier. It is important to emphasize that the regulatory strategies that I advocate in my speech aim to bring legal certainty to this important and emerging market, and that good and efficient companies survive and prevent undue practice from hindering the process, progress of the decentralized economy. Well, thank you for your attention, and again, thank you for the opportunity to, to share this, uh, this knowledge with such a distinguished panel here in Blockchain Academy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Antonio. That was an excellent talk. Um, anyone has got any questions, please, you can post them here. Antonio, a qu uh, quick question for those of um, us who are not 
very familiar with the Brazil's uh, uh, regulatory uh, landscape. Um, what's the um, um, regulatory uh, kind of uh, body for uh, for Brazil's digital assets and crypto assets? Is this is this Central Bank of Brazil, or do you have a a separate entity like FCA or or SEC? Well, in the Central Bank of Brazil, the supervision and and regulation work together in the same uh, the same building in the same organism, and and well, which I think it's make it easier for us to build a regulatory framework which is more uh, would be more successful, and specifically mm -hmm. concerning virtual assets I and mean, crypto assets, we do have a law which was enacted last year. And we are working right now on the construction of the regulatory framework specifically for the VASP, the virtual asset service providers. And mm. in our perspective, we see them very close to the brokers uh, entities that work in the central bank uh, that in, in, in Brazil, which are specialized in dealing with security. But obviously, there are many specialities that we must uh, uh, encompass and deal with that are specifically for the market we we aim to finish the regulatory framework at the the first semester of 2024 and we hope to encompass as many of the recommendations that are spread from fcb fsb and and other organizations like fca in united kingdom in order to deal with the risks that are associated with the market but more than only crypto assets we believe that one market that has more uh, chances to thrive, not only in Brazil, but all over the world, is this tokenization of assets with its, although use the same technologies, is a completely different market in many aspects because it deals with uh, not only different risks, but also a new form, a new way to negotiate many other assets that are already in our traditional market. So we are dealing two different uh, approaches. One is deal with this crypto asset market, which in Brazil is much more, there is much more a speculative uh, intention by the investors. And the tokenization of, of assets, which is a new form to negotiate traditional assets that are already uh, being dealt in, in Brazilian markets in all different countries uh, uh, that the, uh, nowadays. I don't know if I answered your question, but uh, please uh, let me know if you need any more information. But, Yes, you did. Yes, thank you. That was yes, very comprehensive. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. <laughs>